was that there by actually nationalizing the oil industry uh, became a popular hero. But there was a political crisis in that what Mossadegh was also trying to do was to reduce the monarchy into a constitutional monarchy as it was supposed to have been during the Constitutional Revolution. The military was supposed to be under civilian control under the Ministry of Defense the, and under the Prime Minister. According to the Shah's reading, the armed forces were to be directly under the Shah's orders, discipline, command, supervision. And for Mossad there, this was unconstitutional. So in 1952, July of 1952, he confronted the Shah over this, demanded that as prime minister, he should have the right to appoint the minister of defense and also the chiefs of staff. The Shah refused this. So Mossadegh resigned and went to the public, directly said that he can't carry out his mission, succeeding in the nationalization of the oil industry, unless he had his authority as prime minister. And this is when you get the July uprising, uh, what's known in Iran as a Siyatir, 30th of Tir, where there was for three days uh, general strikes in the main cities, a mass of people pouring into the streets, uh, supporting Mossad there. And as a result of that, the Shah actually capitulated and gave Mossad there what he wanted, which was not only return as prime minister, but also with the power to appoint the Minister of Defense and Chief of Staff. So that made, consolidated Mossadegh's power and drastically weakened the power of the Shah.